let's talk about a controversial topic that shouldn't really be controversial. If you're in the art community, you've probably heard at least one of these two philosophies. The first opinion being that you should never use references because you should be making your own ideas and not copying other things and it stifles creativity, etc. And the second opinion being that you should always use references and never draw anything without seeing the real thing in front of you so you know how it really looks and you're not relying on your imperfect memory. Obviously, these two opinions are completely contradictory, so there are some pretty heated discussions about this topic. Mostly what I see is people who are of the second opinion very strongly arguing against the other side, while I rarely see people who have the first opinion. I think it's really a small minority or more new artists who don't really understand the whole conversation and just want to draw whatever they feel like drawing. So which opinion do I have? Well, it's a little more nuanced. Overall, I think this debate is really talked about more than it should. It's kind of like blown out of proportion how much of an issue this actually is, in my opinion. Because I feel like the majority of the community really has the same opinion, or at least a similar opinion, and yet they're acting like there are a lot of people who disagree with them. I think it's just one of those situations where members of the community hear a few people have a certain opinion and just assume it's this large amount of people and get all upset about it and are constantly going on and on and on about how you shouldn't listen to them and they're wrong for XYZ reasons. Getting younger, less experienced artists to, dare I say, spread this negativity around and continue the campaign against a non-existent threat. I think because of how much we talk about this and how negatively ta we talk about this, it honestly makes people have too extreme of an opinion on the, what I would say might be the more correct side. But let's go a little more into the specifics of each of these opinions and what I do and don't agree with. Anyone at all who really studies art to any professional degree uses references. There's nothing wrong with it. You shouldn't feel ashamed of it. You shouldn't feel like you have no creativity or be a little embarrassed that you need to look at something to know how to draw it. It's totally normal and it's actually healthy. You can't know exactly how the human form looks, for example, without studying anatomy. This is what we devote a lot of our time to in art school, is really just looking at references and copying them. There's a lot that can be learned from that, and there's a lot that you can continue to learn from that even as you reach professional level and beyond. There's no time that you should really feel like you have to stop using references, because everyone has more to learn, and more to pick up on, I guess you could say. The world has so much little detail in it, and there's only so much of that detail that we can pick up in one time. You know, our eyes are pretty limited, and as you expand your visual perception through practice, you, you know, studying references and whatnot, you'll pick up more little details that you didn't even notice before. So in general, to know how things really look, in the real world, you have to look at references to some degree. It can be photo references, it can be real life studies, whatever. How I study anatomy probably the most is honestly just looking at real life people while I'm out and about. If I think someone looks aesthetically pleasing, I kind of analyze why I feel that way and without being creepy or staring at them, kind of deciphering what my eyes are picking up that looks nice so that I can kind of replicate that in art later on. So basically the point is you don't actually have to use still photos as your references, at least not every single time. But having a photo does help because it gives you a still image that's not moving so that you can get the exact positioning and everything that you want. For example, a really good tool that a lot of artists use when drawing anatomy is to take pictures of themselves. Now, I don't do this that often because I don't like staring at pictures of myself, but I do sometimes do this for hand and arm positions. If I can't find a good reference for a certain pose or like grasp that I'm looking for, then I will pose my hand that way, maybe pick up a random object around me to get the right like grasping look, and then I'll take a picture of that at the angle I want it to be and use that to help me out. 
Of course, that also has limitations because my hands are just a different shape and size than most hands I'm usually trying to draw. So <laughs> I don't always do that either. <laughs> but that's when we kind of get into what I would say is the limitations of references. Sometimes you can't find exactly what you need from a reference. And even taking a picture of yourself doing the exact pose you want might be a really imperfect reference. I can't exactly look at myself and be able to draw a very fit, large man. I just don't have that build. So as far as references go, we're really limited to what's out there and what we can create with what's available to us. That's where a little bit of imagination comes in. And this is where we kind of transition to the other mindset. While being able to look at an image and copy it verbatim is a really good skill for an artist, especially a realism artist, it's also really important to be able to create things without having to stare at your reference the entire time. Sometimes we have to kind of fill in the blank spaces and create what we can't see, and it's hard to do that when you use references for every single thing you draw. Because when you always have the thing sitting in front of you, you don't really have to use that imagination or commit to memory what things look like because you always have that reference as a crutch to rely on. So in my opinion, you should not always use references because you have to develop your creativity and be able to pull that previous knowledge that you have and you've grown through using references out of your brain at whatever moment you need it to create your own unique image. So you should be practicing to basically recall this information that's stored in your head by trying to replicate, you know, your anatomy, your form, whatever it is you've been studying without having a reference in front of you. It's kind of like when you're studying a language or facts for a quiz or something like that. You look at your study guide, you look at your list of words or whatever it is, and when you're looking at them, you can remember them all, right? Oh, this word means this, that word means that. I remember it because I've been looking at this list for a long time. But then you try taking the list away. And when all you've been doing is looking down that list and copying the definitions in your head, Suddenly, it's really hard to recall any of those words because you don't have them in the context of that list that you've been looking at. It's the same thing with anatomy and other things that you use references for. If you are always using references and then suddenly you take them away and have to draw something from scratch, it's really hard to remember what those things are supposed to look like. So you get better at being able to do that by practicing not using references. Crazy idea, huh? In addition, I am honestly of the opinion that creativity is the most important thing about art. There's a reason why it's called art and not copying someone else's creations or word for word rehashing things that are already out there. Art is supposed to come from the soul. It's supposed to be a reflection of the artist. If you're only ever copying things you see or things other artists create, then you're not expressing yourself, you're expressing other things, and it's not as much of art anymore. So I think developing your creativity by putting aside references sometimes and drawing without them is actually one of the most important things to do as an artist. And of course, you still need to understand how those things look. So study with the references first and then take them away and try to replicate that without them, add your own ideas, and basically take some middle ground between the two different mindsets about this topic. That's my basic opinion. I think these two things kind of work hand in hand. You should have a middle ground. You should not be on one extreme or the other. How, you know, most visceral conversations tend to go. Usually the middle ground is the more accurate take. However, there are some other things to consider here as well. Um, other things that I think are important to add to the conversation. First of all, using references is one of the most common tips that more experienced artists give to younger, newer artists. And you know, that makes sense, right? They're new, they don't know how things look, they need to study them to understand them and all that stuff. And again, I do think all that stuff is really important. 
However, I think it is pushed a little too much on new artists, and here's why. Going back in time, I'm like a 10-year-old Clipsy, let's say. I've been doodling since I was a child, I'm really passionate about drawing, and I'm starting to develop my own style. I'm really excited, and I'm drawing non-stop. I don't use references, I don't even understand yet that references are important. I haven't studied anything, I haven't listened to more experienced artists, I'm just drawing what I'm passionate about and learning things as I go. Now, let's assume this version of Clipsy interacts with a larger, more experienced artist and asks for advice on how they got to where they are. That artist then says, you have to be using references, doing studies, you must understand how everything looks in the real world before you can stylize, before you can draw things from imagination, etc, etc. Young Clipsy here loves drawing cute little bobble-headed doodles, but hates drawing realism. Now I'm being told by a bigger artist that I have to study realism, essentially, to be able to draw the cartoony stuff that I love to draw. I might, you know, start with the studies and try a few, but if I was told that and that was how I thought you had to draw in order to become professional or to get better at all, I probably would have given up on art. I probably would have learned to hate it because I didn't enjoy drawing that kind of thing. And I would drop it all together because what's the point of trying to learn cartoon if I don't enjoy what comes before it? I honestly feel like this holds a lot of young artists back. Feeling like they have to make things look good, look the way they're supposed to look, follow all these tips by artists who are better and have bigger numbers and all that stuff. I feel like it, it discourages people from just being creative and making things the way they want. I mean, when we first pick up a pencil and draw for the first time, we probably just do scribbles and it doesn't look like anything. But to us, it's like a beautiful scene of a unicorn or something. And it gives us so much joy and makes us want to keep trying and keep drawing. And that's what the beauty of art is. If you're not enjoying the process, then there's no point. So for very new, younger artists who are just getting into it, what I honestly think they should be told is not, you have to draw realistic portraits and figure out how anatomy works before you can draw what you want. What I would tell them is, just keep at it, keep drawing what you love, learn as you go, and as you get more comfortable, then go into the studies, start to learn how things really look, use references, and build on those skills that you already have by being creative and just scribbling on a page. Don't kill that era of creation because honestly that initial stage where you're really just scribbling and making whatever comes to mind is honestly the most fun stage of art I think. And there's no reason why young artists who are just drawing for fun should have to skip through that phase and go straight to thinking like a professional. So this is my little bit of advice for more experienced artists talking to younger artists and trying to give them advice. Please don't kill the joy of art for them. Let them just have fun and help them with the specifics and making things look good when they're ready. And to new artists who are just getting into it, just have fun. Keep at it. You're doing great. Even if your art looks terrible to everyone else, it's beautiful because you created it and it's unique. Nobody starts out a master and nobody starts out using references and copying everything as they see it. Everyone starts out scribbling, making stick figures, creating little doodles that come out of their brain, and just having a good time. And if that's not how you start, then maybe you should rethink the way you draw a little bit and go back to the basics. And by basics, I don't mean fundamentals of art. I mean just drawing for fun and drawing whatever you feel like drawing. If you're trying to learn realism because you've heard that's what you have to do to be able to draw good, but you're really hating it, stop and just draw something that really inspires you. It doesn't matter if it looks good at first. You can refine that later. 
So there's my little blurb on that, and I hope that people take something away from that. Art should be always fun first and improvement second. Even if you're not studying references, you're going to be improving over time. I mean, I'm living proof. I barely use references. And while I think that does slow me down a little bit, I'm still leagues ahead of where I started. And I actually like my art, even if I can see all of the imperfections of it. What's important is that it's unique and I created it and it's a piece of me. That makes it special, even if it's imperfect. In conclusion, both using references and drawing without them are important. You should be using references to learn, to build up your skills, to figure out the fundamentals, and to help you when you're really unsure how something is supposed to look. But then you should step away from your references and try to create something without them. Really work on those creative skills and problem-solving skills. If you don't know how something looks and you want to just try fixing it without a reference, go ahead. That might actually be a great way to improve your ability to change things without having an image in front of you. And of course, then look at a reference afterwards to see how <laughs> accurate you were. Neither one of these things I think should be put above the other. References and drawing from imagination are both really important. And I think the whole debate over which one is the right answer is really silly. <laughs> And remember to go where your imagination and your passions take you. Whatever makes you feel motivated and fuels your creativity, do that. You don't have to be a perfect artist before you do that. Just create. Do the studies along the way, on the side, as part of your journey, but not the entire journey. Have fun with art. Never kill what makes it so fun to you. I think that's really all I have to say about that topic. I hope you got a little something out of this. Uh, let me know in the comments if you agree, and if there's another topic related to art that you'd like me to talk about similar to this. Are there more really silly art controversies that really shouldn't be controversies? Have a good time creating, looking at art, and just enjoy your life. Find joy in the little things. It's really important. And now it's time for me to sign off. Thanks for coming to my comfy little bear cave. See you next time.